Hello and welcome to another video on soundproofing and room acoustics. So today is going to be a little bit nerdy, I'm going to warn you, but I'm going to do my best to explain in plain English and very easy to understand ways exactly what acoustic holes are in glass and how this actually will help you understand why soundproof windows are made the way they are. So if you're interested in going just a little bit deeper in understanding how soundproof windows work, I think you'll find this lesson not only interesting, but also useful in your own soundproof window designs. All right, before we jump in, I do have a resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. You can check it out at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. It is a 40 minute soundproofing workshop. It's kind of an intensive that's gonna give you a soundproof design for your studio so that you can then go ahead and start working on actually building your dream home studio. Again, that's at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on what are acoustic holes in glass. So there are three types of acoustic holes in glass that we're going to talk about today. And the first one is called mass air mass resonance. So that is a fancy term for talking about what happens when a sound wave hits the outside pane of glass on a window comes into the airspace between the two panes of glass that then creates like a spring in the airspace which then vibrates the inside pane of glass so if we look at this picture from my studio we can see that a typical soundproof window has two panes of glass and then an airspace in the middle so when sound travels let's say from the outside hits that outside window comes through it's going to resonate the airspace which is then going to resonate that inside window what this does is this will cause a dip in the transmission loss, meaning in plain English, that means that at certain frequencies, there will be a dip in how much that frequency is let through the window. So if we look at this graph from the Master Handbook of Acoustics, we can see that there are specific things we can do to improve the chances of decreasing that dip to such a low frequency that it doesn't really bother us in our room. Imagine if we had high frequencies like in the 1000 hertz range or 4000 hertz range that were letting in sounds through your window, you would really notice that in your recordings. As soon as we get down into like the 50 hertz range where it's like subwoofer bass and kick drums, that's not really going to be a huge problem for most sounds coming in and out of your studio. So in figure 18-5, we can see that there's two columns. On our x-axis, we have glass spacing in inches, meaning the distance of that air gap between your two panes of glass. And then in the left uh, y-axis, we have air mass uh, resonance frequency. So this is the frequency at which sound will go through your glass more readily than at other frequencies, creating what is known as the acoustical acoustic hole. So let's first look at an eighth inch pane of glass. We can see that it's the worst, meaning that for every glass spacing in inches, it's letting in higher and higher frequencies of sound, which remember is a bad thing for our isolation. We want the lowest frequency possible. As we increase the thickness from a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch and all the way down to a half inch, we can see that the frequency at which sound comes in is great re greatly reduced. We can also see that as the glass spacing in inches increases from one to four to 12, all the way at the very far right of this graph, we can see that that also increases the frequency at which the acoustic hole will happen with the mass air mass resonant effect. So for our soundproof studio design, we want to have the greatest airspace possible and the thickest amount of glass possible to get the best isolation. So that's the big takeaway from all this is simply that you just want to have as big an airspace as you can and you want to have as thick of glass as you possibly can. Now let's talk about the second acoustic hole, which is going to be the coincidence effect. So the coincidence effect is when sound waves that are traveling from in the air outside your studio hit the glass and that the speed of the sound wave hitting the glass and the speed of the resonant frequency of the waves in the glass match each other, thus creating this weird phenomenon where at that specific frequency, 
that sound will move through the glass more readily than other frequencies. So this is a little technical, but basically the idea is that there, in every pane of glass, there is something called the coincidence frequency, which is where that frequency will pass through the glass more easily than other frequencies creating an acoustic hole, which is a problem in your studio because that specific frequency you'll hear more readily than other frequencies. And that is not something we want. So I'm gonna take a look at another graph from the Master Handbook of Acoustics. This is uh, figure 18-6. And in this graph we can see with an eighth inch window, so it has an eighth inch pane of glass on the outside and eighth inch pane of glass on the inside with only a quarter inch spacing, this is gonna create a coincidence dip, so the coincidence frequency is gonna be at 4K, or 4,000 uh, hertz. And what this means is that you can see that there, that frequency is gonna let in more of 4K than other frequencies nearby. On this graph, just for sake of showing this, you can also see that there's a mass air mass dip at around, uh, I don't know, 400 hertz or so uh, on this graph. So you can see that this window right here is gonna have some issues, both at the coincidence frequency and also where that mass air mass resonance frequency is. Now, I don't usually want to bring in a lot of math or formulas, but the coincidence frequency is a very simple formula. So I'm just going to show this to you because I think it will illustrate some ways that you can see how the coincidence frequency can be calculated in a window and also show you how we can counteract it and make our windows more soundproof um, using two dissimilar panes of glass thickness. So let's just jump into this really quickly. So the formula for the coincidence effect is pretty simple. It's just the frequency of the coincidence effect equals 500 divided by the thickness of your glass. So for my window, if we look at this chart again here, we can see that I have a half inch pane of glass and then I have a 3 8 inch pane of glass. And I did this on purpose. So to figure out the coincidence effect of the half inch pane of glass, it's very simple. I'm just gonna take 500 and divide it by 0.5, which is going to give me 1000 hertz or 1K. So 1K is gonna be coming through that glass more readily than other frequencies around it. Now, if we look at my other pane of glass, we have 500 divided by 3 eighths or 0.375 and that's gonna create a coincidence frequency of 1,333 hertz. So notice that because we have different thicknesses of glass, the acoustic hole at those frequencies are different. And this is good, because you can imagine it's like that, fre that frequency of 1,000 hertz will go through the outside pane more readily, but then it won't go through the inside pane. It'll get stuck in the air cavity, and that will help us reduce the coincidence effect. So all this math and all this science is to say that having two dissimilar panes of glass is gonna be helpful with soundproofing. Lastly, if you're still with me here, the last thing is called standing waves. And standing waves you may have heard of because standing waves happen not only in between two panes of glass, but they also happen in a room. And not to get too crazy and over the top with acoustics and things like that right now, standing waves, all you need to know is that when two waves moving in the opposite direction hit each other head on, there's two things that will happen. It will either boost the wave or it will decrease the wave or it can completely cancel out the wave where one wave's peak is another wave's trough. What this does is it creates either a boost or a complete decrease in the frequency that those two waves are interacting at. So that said, what this can do is create added resonances between your two panes of glass that could potentially create potential acoustic holes that could bust through your glass at cer certain frequencies. Now for the higher frequencies, what we can do in our soundproof window design is simply add glass fiber around all the edges in the air cavity between our windows. In my studio, I did this. I used some glass fiber insulation to reduce the amount of bouncing around of the wave sound waves within the window cavity. And this will absorb some of those waves reducing the amount of standing waves in the window cavity. However, low frequencies are bigger waves and it's hard for just a one inch thick piece of fiberglass to absorb a low frequency wave. So any window, no matter what, is gonna have some issues dealing with the low frequency waves. But again, 
life is not perfect and this is not a huge deal. So I just wanted to explain standing waves to show you that the reason we add glass fiber in the window cavity is to reduce those standing waves that are bouncing around inside your window. All right, that was a lot. So let me go forward with the conclusion here and talk about everything we just learned. So with the mass air mass resonance effect, we found that increasing the mass of our window and also increasing the distance between our two panes of glass will reduce the mass air mass resonance frequency lower to a point where it doesn't bother us in our studio. We also learned that using two dissimilar thicknesses of glass will reduce the coincidence effect, thus reducing certain frequencies higher up in the frequencies spectrum from going directly through your glass into your studio. We also learned that adding glass fiber around the inside cavity of a window will reduce the standing waves in that window, thus also decreasing the amount of acoustic holes that will happen due to the standing waves. So as a general takeaway with soundproof windows, I would recommend getting the thickest glass you can afford and using dissimilar panes of glass. I would recommend trying to get as big of an air cavity as you possibly can with your design in your walls. And lastly, I would recommend insulating the space around your window cavity with glass fiber, ideally using the thickest glass fiber you can with the design to reduce the amount of standing waves that you have in the window cavity. I hope this video has been helpful and this lesson on acoustic holes has opened up your mind to why we design our soundproof windows the way we do. If you're interested in building your own soundproof window, I have a link in the description below that will take you to actually how to build this, but now you have some of the theory behind why we do what we do to build soundproof windows. If you are interested in building a soundproof studio, as you can tell from this video, it is a little complicated, but I wanna make it easy for you. My whole goal is to make something complicated like room acoustics and soundproofing and physics easy to understand and doable for any home studio enthusiast. So check out that free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop to get started on your journey of actually building your soundproof studio. All right, I will see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video, and always leave comments if you have any questions. I try to answer them as fast as possible. All right, I'll see you all later.